Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video we'll talk about the first CRISPR genome editing medicine to be performed directly inside the human body. So this landmark event is the joint collaboration between two companies, Editas Medicine and Allergen. And so just the other week now, they released a report where they announced dosing of the first patient in a landmark phase 1-2 clinical trial of CRISPR medicine AGN-151587, also known as EDIT-101, for the treatment of LCA-10. So we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail in this video. So firstly, we'll mention what is this CRISPR technology and why is this such a landmark study? And then we'll look at what is the disease that they're trying to treat and then how they're using CRISPR to treat it. And before I forget, up on your screens now is the report that was released on March the 4th. This is free to, for anyone to look at, so I'll put the link for that in the description. So CRISPR then, as I explained before in a previous video, I feel like I'm somewhat of a CRISPR expert. Whether or not that's completely true, I don't know, but I studied it a lot during my master's project. So let's briefly talk about the CRISPR technology. So when you hear of the term CRISPR, often that's referring to the CRISPR-Cas9 system. So this is a system that's been exploited as a gene editing tool from a bacterial defence mechanism. And so the way that this works is you have a protein known as Cas9, which is a DNA endonuclease, which means it can cut the, um, the DNA strand, and it's guided to specific locations in the genome via a guide RNA. And so you can tailor these guide RNAs for any specific location in the genome to target the Cas9 protein. And so you can kind of decide where the Cas9 protein will introduce this break into the DNA. The cell then needs to repair this break and it can do this in an error prone uh, method or you can introduce a donor template with a specific modification that you want to make in the genome to fix and edit the genome effectively. So the structure of Cas9 is up here. You can see there's two endonuclease domains which cut either strand of the, the DNA. And so CRISPR is a really flexible tool to be able to make targeted changes into the genome. So how can it be used for treating diseases? Well, let's talk about the example here that Editas Medicine and Allergen have done. So there are two main types of CRISPR medicines, in vivo CRISPR medicines, that edit genes inside the body, which is in this case here, and ex vivo engineered cell medicines, where CRISPR gene editing occurs outside the body to create edited cell medicines that are then administered to patients. So just to elaborate this point a bit further, the in vivo CRISPR medicine is where you take the CRISPR material and you directly put that into the cells in the human body. Whereas the engineered medicines are when you can take some of the patient's sample and their DNA, modify it, test it, and then reintroduce it to the patient. And so, as I mentioned, this direct and fever approach is what makes this such a landmark study um, in this case we're talking about today. So this in vivo CRISPR medicine has been designed to treat LCA10. So what actually is LCA10? So it stands for labor congenital amaurosis 10. And so LCA is a group of inherited retinal degenerative disorders caused by mutations in different genes and previously it's been an untreatable disease and is a common cause of inherited childhood blindness. And so the case of LCA10, it's caused by mutations in the centrosomal protein 290 gene, otherwise referred to as ZEP290. And so the key thing is it's caused by mutations and this causes degeneration in ocular photoreceptor cells, which is critical for normal vision. But the fact that it's a mutation is suggestive that if we can fix this mutation, we can revert the degenerative effects in the cells. So the question is, how can we use CRISPR to fix this mutation? And so this is the idea behind EDIT 101, which is the aim behind this clinical trial. And so what they want to do is, as I said, to remove the CEP290 mutation and to be able to restore normal protein expression of CEP290 to restore photoreceptor function and fission. So if you go into the Editas Medicine website, you'll find an overview of the current strategy of how they're trying to fix this mutation. So this mutation occurs between X126 and X127 in the CEP290 gene. And so this is in a non-coding region of the gene, but that isn't really too important to understand what they're doing. What they want to do is get rid of this mutation. And so they want to delete this fragment of DNA that contains the mutation. So what their approach is, is to have two guide RNAs 
that go to two regions flanking the mutation. You get a double strand break by the Cas9 and then you get removal and deletion of this intermediate fragment and hopefully that would restore the protein expression and hence the receptor function and vision. And so this is an experimental medicine and as I said before it's a in direct and feeble approach and so they deliver it via subretinal injection. So how do they do this? Well it's a viral process and I know virus is probably the last thing you want to talk about at the moment but this isn't the virus that everyone's talking about this is an adeno associated virus which is very safe in comparison. This is because adeno associated viruses are not currently known to cause disease and so this is just a mechanism where they put the Cas9 genome sequence and the guide RNAs, they package it into this virus and then the virus will infect the cells around the photoreceptor cells and so you can introduce the Cas9 material that can then fix the CEP290 gene and so this is just the way that they do this approach. And so naturally there are always going to be concerns with using any kind of viral mediated gene transfer. So to make this a little bit more safe, they only have Cas9 expression in photoreceptor cells because they have the expression of Cas9 regulated by a photoreceptor specific GRK1 promoter which is only expressed in photoreceptor cells. And so this minimises the expression of Cas9 to other cells in the body so that it should only be in those cell types where you have Cas9 expression where you get the editing. So where are they at then with the treatment of this disease? So as I mentioned they've just started dosing the first patients um, in this phase 1 slash 2 clinical trial and so it's also known as the brilliance trial and so the aim of this because it's such an early stage clinical trial is to assess the safety, the tolerability and the efficacy of this treatment like will it even work let alone is it safe for the patients to take and so currently they have 18 patients and additional patient enrolment is still ongoing and each of these patients if they sign up for this trial are receiving a single uh, administration of this virally packaged CRISPR treatment via subretinal injection so and this is also only in one eye so this is very exciting news and I'm pretty certain we'll only hear more news like this in the upcoming months and years to come so as always hopefully you've learned something and thank you for listening